Yeah, Happy New Year, Mike. Welcome back. Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily think it's a conundrum, but I, I think Sam played well down the stretch. Uh, they project to get a more traditional head coach this time around. I think he projects better in that type of offense. Uh, and they have to get a deal done. They have to move forward with Sam Bradford as the quarterback. The question is, how deep do you go? I, I don't think the money is an issue. They realize you have to pay for a starting quarterback in this league. To me, the bigger issue is years, and we'll see. Uh, I, I would be very wary, though, of letting him actually get to free agency. Uh, if you have to go from three to four years, you might have to bite the bullet on that. But the, the last thing you want to do is get to free agency similar to what happened with Jeremy Macklin last year and then all of a sudden it becomes a bidding war and and not only do you have to acquiesce the numbers as far as money and years at that point you have to be happy and that could in, bring into what you just mentioned about the potential coach and having to get the okay from the quarterback for the next coach and that's the last thing you want alright so Bradford the Eagles, let's say, offer him a three-year deal, and somebody else offers him a five-year deal. I mean, doesn't that seem pretty, pretty, pretty black and white that the, his decision is pretty easy for him? Yeah, it does, but I, I don't think anybody's going to offer him a five-year deal. I mean, other teams, with the possible exception of Cleveland, are smart enough to understand uh, his injury history, and they're going to be very, very wary uh, of going five years. Now, the NFL isn't like baseball or basketball, and the, and the contracts aren't fully guaranteed so uh, when you hear five year deal it doesn't mean you're on hook for five years if somebody uh, does it prudently as far as the salary cap and it's team friendly they might may be able to say it's a five year deal but only really have two or three years of, of, of concrete money that they have invested in the player but the Eagles could do that too so there's plenty of ways. And the one thing Howie Roseman is very, very good at, and nobody's going to criticize him for it, he's, he's very good with, with doing contracts of, of that nature, and I expect he'll get something done here. All right. Um, how tied to Pat Shermer should the Eagles be at this point? Did he show yesterday the continuity really means something? I mean, if you're going to invest in Bradford – wouldn't you almost want to invest in Shermer with him instead of starting back from square one and having Bradford come in here on a big contract, learning another new offense? Yeah, I mean, I wrote about it last week. I, I think Shermer would be a very, very good choice to be blatant. And I think he is their safety net choice. Uh, I think it would be a tough sell for the fan base uh, to move forward with uh, a similar situation that they just went through with Chip Kelly. But I don't think that would be what happens i i think pat's smart enough to know uh in his real uh, sort of bones in the nfl were made under andy reed and and mike holmber and guys like that i i think he understands for long-term success you need to run a more traditional offense i think he would go in that direction while also being open-minded enough to bring in some of the tempo stuff he learned under chip kelly so in a lot of ways, I think you have the best of both worlds. That's your decision. But again, it's a really, really tough sell for the fan base, and that's that's a part of it. Politics is a part of it. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, if Sam Bradford goes to Jeff Lurie and says, look, I want to be your quarterback, but I want Pat Shermer to be the coach, does Jeff Lurie need to take that into account when he makes this decision? I think he should. Uh, I, I think you know, when you were gone, when you were on vacation, we talked to Casey Joyner, who who mentioned that he thinks Sam Bradford's a top ten quarterback and could be a top five quarterback. I, I wouldn't go that far, uh, but I, I think when you look at the options uh, on the open market, you look at the draft. You know, nobody's getting a better prospect than Jameis Winston, who is tremendous this year in this rookie season. But look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers; it's still a growing process. It's still going to be years of pain while watching a, a, a prospect, even at that level, grow. So I'm not sure the Eagles want to take that huge step back to draft a, a lesser prospect than a player like that, uh, which means you, you go free agency or trade. Nobody's out there. The, 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 
best option by far is Sam Bradford, and, and you try to surround him with the right people. And I think at that point he could develop into a well above average quarterback. So you have to take it into account, but you can't let uh, a guy who's an above average player maybe run the thing for you. And you have to make the best decision for for the organization. Yeah, and, and I know we'll we'll talk we'll talk a lot more about this on tomorrow's show. We're live at the Golden Nugget, but. I just have a tough time investing into Bradford with the money that he might be offered someplace or even here and then having to start back over from square one. I mean, this is going to be like his fifth different coordinator if they bring someone in here. And some people have suggested, well, why not make Shermer the offensive coordinator? Well, you bring in an offensive-minded coach, they're not going to want to have a coordinator in place here, so you're limiting yourself there unless they went with a defensive-minded coach. So the next question would be, Who's at the top of these? At, we're, we're hearing names all over the place. Who are the most realistic names for this team? I, I to be honest, I, I think the Eagles are going to get Adam engaged in that building tomorrow and try to make sure he doesn't leave. Uh, I think that's their number one uh, choice. I think it has been from day one. I think part of the timing uh, of the Kelly firing was to get the so-called head start, make sure they would be first in line for Adam Gase. Uh, and I think every opportunity will be made to close a deal as quickly as possible. If that it does not happen, because he's sort of the bell of the ball in this year's coaching search, sort of like Chip Kelly was back in 2013, a lot of teams are interested and want to listen. Uh, if that doesn't happen, that's where all the other names come into the, the equation. I think you're going to see the interviews with Doug Marone and, and, and people like that. But I think the safety net. He's interesting, by the way. Let me let me let me comment on Marone. He's kind of interesting because he has some of the Chip Kelly uh, style, right? I mean, he 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 would be an, would he be an interesting candidate, Marone, because of I mean, he runs a similar tempo type of offense. Well, he did at college, but uh, I think also when you saw what he did uh, uh, at the head level, he's smart enough to sort of morph it. So I I think so. In a way, like Shermer, he's smart enough to realize he's got to adapt a little bit. He can't just go spread offense college style, up tempo all the time. It just doesn't work, really, because of the number of players. But I think it's a two man search, Mike. I really do. I think it's Adam Gase. And if it's not Adam Gase, the safety net is Pat Shermer. And all the interviews will be spin to claim that the Eagles did their due diligence before hiring Pat Shermer if they can't get Adam Gase. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, has a full list of the candidates. So how realistic are uh, – let's start with Peyton. How realistic? None. I, I don't think – I don't think the Eagles have much interest. To, they don't even have a second-round pick. Remember that. They, they traded that to St. Louis. So that's what New Orleans wants to get him out of his contract and – I don't think he would have much interest uh, coming here. I think he would look towards more San Francisco or the New York Giants would be uh, even Indianapolis because of Andrew Luck would be the most likely landing spots for Sean Payton. Um, obviously, you mentioned Gaze is the top pick. Yesterday, there were some conflicting reports on Doug Peterson. So how about a guy who's a little under the radar uh, You know, emerging here? Would it be... Uh, more likely someone like that or somebody that's more of the higher profile retread? No, I don't think I, I think it would be more likely somebody that Doug Peterson who is obviously an Andy Reid guy I think that report was more agent driven because Bob Lamont is the agent and sort of trying to get his name out there but uh, Terrell Austin who's going to have an interview if the Eagles don't hire gays. And remember all these interviews mean nothing all these scheduled interviews mean nothing if you hire a head coach. So while you have to set these things up, doesn't necessarily mean you're ever going to get there. But I, I think the Eagles are like a lot of teams. They did the same thing with Chip Kelly. They have the same mentality now. They want a guy who's going to be here for 14 years like Andy Reid if they hit. They want continuity. They just didn't hit on it with Chip Kelly. Uh, but they want a younger guy. Gase is 38 years old. Terrell Austin is a young guy, defensive coordinator in Detroit. I think it would be more in that direction. Uh, John, we talked about this. I've been asking about it for a couple of years. We talked about it probably about midway through the season. 
three four or four three is that an important um offseason decision or does that not really weigh into any sort of coaching hire i think it's important but i don't think it'll weigh i don't think they'll force if they hire an offensive coach to use the four three but i I think if you hire the right coach he's going to look at the talent you have assembled and make the decision that's better fit for a four three and then go and hire a defensive coordinator who likes to run that scheme so I think if you hire the the right coach, even if it's an offensive guy, it takes care of itself. Clearly, the defense, uh, the defensive talent this team has on hand is better suited for a four three, especially guys like Fletcher Cox and Vinny Curry, who I think will be back, uh, even though he's a free agent. The Eagles have already offered him a contract extension. And then you look at that linebacker situation. Always talking about Michael uh, Michael Kendrick, Kiko Alonso. They are not inside linebackers. They are weak side linebackers in a 4 3 scheme, and they would be much more effective in, in that type of defense. Uh, by the way, you talked about Marone, and it seems that there's some buzz uh, that he will interview with the Eagles. Uh, Doug Marone, who was the Bills coach, and then uh, I guess was the, what was he, the offensive coordinator in Jacksonville this year? Yeah, he was assistant head coach, offensive line coach. So he sort of did that power play in Buffalo, it kind of blew up in his face. Uh, he was at Syracuse in the college level. That's where he, where he learned the up tempo stuff. And he did a good job with Buffalo. It looks a lot better now. They were nine and seven with him running the team and Jim Schwartz running the defense. He's going to be another guy who might get a, a chance to be a head coach in this league again. Uh, so his job in Buffalo is looked uh, looked on a lot more favorably now than it was before Rex Ryan got there. Uh let me get your thoughts on the current and future GM situation in Philadelphia. Uh, the current situation, again, GM is a title. It's nothing more. There's not going to be a general manager. Howie Roseman's the general manager. He's in charge of all personnel, and that's not going to change. And before, even though he didn't have the title, and I think that's one of the things that angered Jeffrey Lurie because he wanted Chip Kelly to, to take the accountability for his actions. Instead, on that Monday press conference the day before he was fired, he kind of fended it off and said he wasn't the general manager. Uh, and that was just a semantics game. It, it, again, the title is meaningless. If two has the power over the, the 53-man roster, the 90-man roster in the offseason, it was Howie Roseman at, at first who had the power over the 90. Chip always had the power over the 53. Then he got complete control, and now it's back to Howie Roseman. More on this tomorrow. John and I will be live. We'll talk about the NFL playoffs. We'll get into uh, the Eagles offseason. Uh, John's got the rankings of the free agents uh, that the Eagles uh, will have to bring back. You know, uh, Vinny Curry's interesting. I think that will be an interesting sign of which way they'll go defensively in the future. Sam Bradford, obviously, at the top of that list, who will be the next coach? John just said it. If Adam Gaze gets in that building tomorrow, he doesn't think they want him to leave. If he does leave, possibly Pat Shermer as the next head coach for Philadelphia, which I think you're right, John, would probably be a kind of a dud move. But sometimes that's what you need. You need that le- under-the-radar, just stabilizing move. I liken the Shermer bradford return as like the phillies bringing pete mackinan back like hey we don't need to hand this over to somebody else to have them fail let mackinan kind of just you know continue the course and we'll evaluate him on the job in a season where we don't have a lot of expectations yeah i mean sexy is not the always way to go the the eagles went sexy in 2013 it did not work out chip kelly was the the flavor of the month the belt of the ball it did not work out uh, to to go under the radar and, and stick with continuity, the guy who has gotten the best out of Sam Bradford in the past, the guy Bradford likes, and a guy who knows different systems. He's not going to be a slave to one system or one scheme like Chip Kelly was. Uh, I think it would be a very, very underrated hire. All right. Uh, for more uh, tomorrow, we'll have four hours of conversation. John and I on the NFL playoffs, the NFL Black Monday continuing. We have Tom Coughlin gone in New York as well. So we'll dive a little bit more into the NFC East. Thanks, John. I'll talk to you tomorrow, pal. All right. Thanks, Mike.